For the longest time, your menu system on Quest has been essentially one plane of entertainment. A highly anticipated feature has been the ability to move panels and anchor them in place. Well, with the V67 update, your menu will go from this to this. But we take things a step further. With a deeper dive into other features of the upcoming V67 update, we take a closer look at the potential new Apple headset to compete with the Quest and an eye tracking module for Quest that costs just $10 to manufacture. And so strap in for this week's worth of VR news. A lot of people are talking about this new eye tracking accessory for the Quest by a company called Inzai. The tracking module will be an accessory for the Quest 2 and 3 via USB-C or audio jack. And I think the most interesting thing is not actually using cameras to track your eyes. Inzai's Lumi utilizes six photo sensors and infrared illuminators instead. This design specifically reduces battery consumption five times less than traditional setups and offers an amazing 1000 Hz refresh rate with minimal latency. The photo sensors that themselves only cost $10, while well, the product as a whole will be sold at $160. Right now we are only seeing minor benefits from eye tracking in terms of increased performance through foveated rendering, but with reduced cost and a new method to track the eyes, we could actually see this integrated in the upcoming Quest headsets if they utilise the same technology, and for a price significantly cheaper than before. The module is less accurate than traditional infrared cameras. But in time, in combination with AI, this could potentially give performance benefits to standalone VR. That and enhancements to social interactions and features like gaze from Apple Vision Pro. But while I love talking about the future, let's talk about what we have now, and that's the V67 PTC. Rolling out current in the V67 PTC brings something I've been waiting for, and this is a close second behind augments. And that's the ability to anchor and independently move your windows around your space. Now I've been checking my quest for software updates all day, but as usual rollouts aren't consistent across all devices. Luckily Luna from X has got access as you can see on screen now. According to Luna, we get access to this new window layout via the experimentals tab. It's limited to three dock screens and three spatial displays and each panel size can be freely adjusted. You can also freely place your keyboard. This sort of setup is perfect for movies or remote desktop as it gives you the freedom to have the setup the way you want and just makes sense and is the first real movement towards Meta's new OS vision. The future of this is in combination with augments and this will give us pass through home environments that are consistent as we can place our spatial displays and augments in our actual space that will become our own custom home environments. I've been talking about this for over a year now and it's nice to finally see some real progress towards this. The V67 also comes with the ability to scan QR codes, so you can easily connect to Wi-Fi, Netflix or Mod.io for example. It's nice to see the influence of good features from the Vision Pro make their way onto the Quest software, as this is what competition can do for VR. And speaking of competition, according to Mark Gurman, the infamous Apple leaker, Apple is shifting gears to bring us a more affordable headset by late 2025. Apple's aiming for something around $1,500, making it more competitive with Meta's headsets. And bearing in mind, that time frame would probably fit around the launch of Meta's new OS headsets, like the Asus and Lenovo headsets. But just to note, the Vision Pro isn't dead, just on pause whilst they focus on this cheaper option. According to Gurman, expect the Vision Pro 2 to roll out roughly around 2026. The new cheaper Vision Pro will be stripped back, most probably have a less powerful chip and no eye tracking, but it will be interesting to see what they do with the displays, as this is the key feature. Also there have been rumours in circulation that it could use your phone as a processor, which is actually something John Carmack wanted to push for the Meta headsets originally. Either way, this is good news for VR. Lastly, I just want to touch on something kind of crazy. Gorilla Tag just topped 100 million in revenue, which from a solo dev is just insane, and especially inside VR. The game continues to grow year after year, and I think this is driven by two things. The multiplayer social aspect, and the fact this makes for good engaging content. A game that looks good on traditional media has the potential to go viral, like the most recent I Am Cat game. I Am Cat is currently out on App Lab, but the simple nature of this sandbox game is exploding all over the internet and is directly translating into sales from App Lab. 
The fact that this is on App Lab on the Quest Store and that the visibility is even higher, there really isn't a better time to start developing games for VR. So if you're interested in developing a game, there are thousands of resources to get you started, both free and paid. This was just a short one today, but I hope you all enjoyed today's video. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.